Hello, everyone. Welcome to Shan's Patswa Academy, Jamaican Patswa Simplified. My name is Shan, your Jamaican Patswa teacher from Jamaica. Today, I have another interview for you. Now, I like doing these interviews because they show us how non-Jamaicans love, appreciate, learn, and use Jamaican Patwa. So today, I have with me Jimmy Coton Pelagi, who is from Martinique. Now, let's begin. Come and me teach your Patwa now. So, Jimmy, welcome to Shan's Patwa Academy. Thank you Thank so you. much for agreeing to do this interview with me. I know Most you probably welcome. have a lot of things doing, so thank you so much for fitting me in. And I'm sure it's going to be fun, and I'm sure we're going to learn from each other, and I'm sure the yeah. audience will learn a lot from you. I think so. so. Um, in the interview, you can use um, Patwa as much as possible. That's, that's okay. good because it showcases, you know you speaking in Padua. Or English okay. is fine as well. Okay. Um, so you choose which one you're more comfortable with and we'll... Okay. I okay. Mi we can mix the two of them too. Yes, mix up the two of them. Yeah, <laughs> okay. that's a nice too. All of that. Okay. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, um, I'm scrolling through Instagram, you know, mindlessly scrolling and I, and I see you. I see you yeah. in your car listening to some music and I'm thinking... Okay, just another Jamaican listening to because it was Jamaican music, right? I, I'm not sure if it yeah. was reggae or dancehall, or, but it was Jamaican music. So I'm like, mm -hmm. just another, just another Jamaican, you know, listening to music. But then you start translating it in French, and I'm like, wait, what's happening here? This is this is intriguing. So I scroll through your page and I realize that you do this all the time. So mm -hmm. what was your um, inspiration. Why did you start doing um, Patois to French translations? Well, okay. Well, um, make we start from the very beginning then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> me love dancer, me love dancer, but for me, I dare me, need, as Jamaican would say, <laughs> for a <the> little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it started at the age of, I would say, eight. Mm -hmm. But first, I, I would listen to Martinican dancehall artists, so mostly artists from my country. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. I would buy CDs and things like this. So that's how I, I got familiar with dancehall music first. And I would actually sing the song as well. Then um, as time went by, um, I got used to Jamaican dancehall music, the rhythms and everything. So yeah, and then we would have sing the song them. <laughs> like the Jamaican artists them, but um, we never understand what them say. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so the Mar have the so, tool. So mm -hmm. the, the, the Martin, how do you say it? Martinican? Martinicans, yes. Okay. So the Martinican um, dancehall artists were singing in French? In, in French and Martinican Creole, because we have Creole as well. Oh, like okay. you guys have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, That's so. Pretty cool. uh, yeah, so they use the two of them. Yeah, French and Martinique and Creole. So, okay. um, so me would have sing the Fidem song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then me get familiar with Patois, with Jamaican dancehall music. And as me said a while ago, we would uh, sing Jamaican dancehall song. And we would actually repeat the word them. <laughs> but me no, no, me never know what they mean. <laughs> yeah. So, and me actually write song too in French and Martinique and Creole. Mm -hmm. okay. And then when we start uh, go to university, yeah, we we'll go to university. Um, my third year, we had a, a course, a class named Jamaican Creole, Creole Jamaica in French. Oh, okay. And basically- In, 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 in university? In, in university, college. yes. Wow. Yeah, in, in Martinique. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the teacher is named Romain Cruz. Okay. So we would listen to Jamaican dancehall song and break down the lyrics, translate them in French and things like this. So 
that are one sitting that me would have do by myself, you see. But when me go and attend um, that class, it's like it's straighten my, you see, that reflex, I would say. You see, it become a habit. Now, when I, when I, when me listen dance on music, who have you know what them say exactly? So we have that class, so it help. And we get even more familiar with Jamaican dance hall and also the language, Jamaican patois and Jamaican culture overall as well. Then we do a master. Yeah. So we write a master dissertation on Jamaican dance hall. Um, violence in Jamaica, the link between dance hall music and violence in Jamaican society. Okay. Well, it was basically it was about um, saying whether there is a link or not between the two. Okay. Yeah. So when we we write a piece of our work, um, so we get to go into this song them even deeper than before, and the language as well. And we love we just love Jamaican Creole. We just love patois. And okay. so, yeah. When we get the master now, when we get my my degree, my teacher. He, he is actually one of my friends them on Facebook and he would have seen me post them uh, where I deal with Jamaican and dance all song, break down lyrics and things like this. And one day he come up to me and he say, um, you should have write a book about it. Yeah. Let the public know about it. Why you, why you don't write a book? And then he stopped right there. So 2016 and I wrote this book. <laughs> it named Le Dance All Sous Un Nouveau Jour. In English, it would it would mean dance hall under new light. Under yeah. new light, dance hall under yeah, new light. Under okay. a new light, yeah. So, oh. and in this book, basically, me, me I talk about holy sitting, like um, things that actually happen in Jamaican society. Some of them sensitive topics too, like crime, violence against women. So, me I talk about them thing there. In a Jamaican society, then we break down this on them where I talk about the same thing. You see? Yeah, like abortion as well, teenage pregnancy, and things like this. And right. people love it. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> we have a backtrack go way back to like, when you are eight now. Can you just say all the things? I'm going to ask the whole of questions. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So, when you were when you were eight and listening to um, dance song music, do you remember like your first? encounter with the music like um mm -hmm. yeah you were listening to martinican um mm -hmm. artists before but mm -hmm. then you met the jamaican patwano um what mm -hmm. was do you remember like how you felt when you first when you first heard jamaican patwa like the first time you heard it what was like what was your experience do you remember mm -hmm. how you felt um honestly me can't tell you exactly how me feel them time there but me just know say me love it and you know as well the, um, the image of some of the artists them like the legend them like particular how him, him put on him at you see back when things like the, the dark classes we actually have one picture where when we look like him <laughs> we look me actually look like him on a picture you see when and you, you were can like see me eight, dance. when you were young yeah um i think me was about like maybe 10. yeah and basically me did that jump up and yeah, impersonate bone tickler. So you see, you have the image as well, and then you have the song or the language song. And you know, no, me just fell in love with it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's how you became um, curious about the culture as well, or that was much later on. Hmm. would us, it was much later on. As I said, when I start my studies. Yeah, I get even more passionate about it. Like go deep in the culture, the dance hall music. Okay, but what is beyond beyond that? What are, what is happening actually in Jamaican society and the language? You have to you have to practice it. You have to understand even a little bit of patwa because patwa is actually the I would say the official language of dance hall music and even people from the street and everything. So if I didn't have any notions in Patois, I would have missed a lot of things as a Caribbean researcher 
who has a keen interest in Jamaican dance and music? So between between the age of eight when you just started and you taking the course in university, mm -hmm. um, between that time you were just listening to the music. You weren't like actively studying. You were just listening. Yes, to music. that's it. Yeah, mostly listening and singing <laughs> every day, every day. Me have me at fun and yeah, me lock up in a me room and people actually could hear me sing. Yeah, yeah. But during Don't that time, me during <laughs> that time, did you did you understand more of the language? Like it, it just came like naturally, or did you not start understanding anything until you actually started doing the translations in the course in university? Mm, well, me could have catch some of the word them, yeah, from them time there still some somewhere that I could understand, but majority of it I couldn't understand. I would say, yeah, but I will sing it. But it it's actually when I started my studies that I get, I got really deeper into it. Yeah, that's when you're you're you got a deep curiosity into the the culture. Yes, yes, okay. exactly. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about Martinique for a while then. Um, mm -hmm. Well, let's start with you then. How many languages um, do you speak? Um, French, Martinique and Creole, donc, mon cap à Creole, je parle français. Uh, I can speak English too, due to my studies, and a little bit of Patois as well. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the official language of Martinique is French, right? Yes. And then you is, is Martinique, um, what's it called? Martinique and Creole? Or Martinique uh, and Creole? Um, Martinique and Creole, well, actually, it's it's the mother tongue uh, for um, many of us. Martinique okay. and Creole, yeah. For so, me, for example, my mother would speak Creole from a very young age. I hear my mother speak Creole to me, yeah. So it's 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 but like your mother tongue, and then French would be the official language that you learn yes. in official settings. So it's similar to like it's similar to Jamaica then with Jamaican patois and English. Yes, where, exactly. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. exactly. So um, you said Martinique and Creole is similar mm -hmm. to Jamaican patois, and of course patois is from French, um, mm -hmm. but and some sources say that Jamaican patois have some French words in it, but I've never met any French words personally. <laughs> uh, me neither. Yeah. Right. So I, I'm that that's still kind of I'm still doing some research on that. However, um, what would you say are some of the similarities or differences then between um, Martinican Creole and Jamaican Patois? Well, I think there are many um, similarities, especially when it comes to grammatical structure. For example, um, Jamaican would say I sleep in my sleep. In Creole, we would say, c'est dormi, ika dormi. You see, c'est dormi, ika dormi. Dormi is actually the verb is sleep. And Jamaica would say, I sleep in my sleep. You see? So, um, there is actually a thesis that has been uh, written by uh, a woman from Martinique. Her name is Nicole Arsenek, and she, she made a wonderful piece of work so she shows the similarities and the differences in between the two languages. But as far as I'm con concerned, I notice like that there are some similarities when it comes to grammatical structures. And also the proverb, like, Dopino Ufi Frighten. We have that, and it will mean, Sela Be Bakba Bef Kasote, meaning that. Um, you would say like a cow uh, can, all, can only jump over a small fence, you see? Yeah, and in Jamaica, you have dopino if you frightened. So we have a lot of proverbs that are kind of similar. Like one, one cocoa, small basket. We have grain diri ki ka fe sac. So it's, it's grains of rice that actually full, full up a whole bag of rice. You see, you have things like that. <laughs> and even the way we express our ideas and things, sometimes I have to go through Martinique and Creole when I, while translating Jamaican lyrics in French, uh, 
in the process I have to go to Martinique and Creole first to really grasp the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. So um, you speak English mm -hmm. as well. Um, what percentage of Martinique um, po population speaks English, would you say? Mm. Uh, I can't tell you the exact number, but I would say like a minority of us. Yeah, so just how, a few how did you, of us can speak English. How did you learn English? I would say at school and... The music helped a lot as well. Yeah, the music, school, and yes, yes, yes. So I try to practice every day to listen to it as well. Watch English contents. Yeah, whether it's Jamaican so, sometimes. And yeah. <laughs> so do you think do you think that your knowledge of the English language um assisted you in understanding Jamaican Pato or was it vice versa? Oh, can you repeat, please? I didn't catch do, the, the do, first part. Uh, do you <laughs> think that your mm -hmm. your because you knew because you speak English, mm -hmm. it was easier to learn Jamaican patwa, or was mm -hmm. it patwa first then English after? Did they have any influence on each other? I think so. I think that um, it really helps. Yeah, me having me having like being good in English. It helps me to understand patwa because um, actually patwa both words from the English language, and so I think that yeah, it really helped. It really helped, uh -huh. and also the fact that I myself speak Martinique and Creole every day. You see, uh, so I actually have this conscience. I would say this Creole conscience. So it helps. <laughs> uh, Martinique and Creole. Um, what's the main, what, what language does it um, take heavily from? Like Jamaican Patois, um, mm -hmm. English influences it a lot, but it has some mm -hmm. African words and Spanish words and so on. What about uh, Martinican Creole? I think it's basically the same. It's both from French and we have some African words in it too. Yeah, I uh, cannot really reach words, but it's, it's the same. We borrow words from the French language and also we have words coming from Africa. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever been to Jamaica? Yes, twice. The first time was in 2018 and the second time was in 2019. Oh, was it was it like yeah. vacation or studying? Well, the first time it was vacation, really vacation, yeah. Uh, well, it, it was actually my dream. So me just get up and me say, well, <laughs> we have to go to Jamaica this year, yeah, yeah, yeah. So me go up on Airbnb and go through the things them and me find something down at Mondeville. Yeah, me never know about Mondeville still, but yeah. <laughs> me reach out to the people them and me tell them, say, me want to go to Jamaica and go to dance hall parties. And if they can carry me, go to dance hall parties where them stay and things like this. So them say, yes. So me book me place and we go there. Yeah, it was the first time, and the second time it was vacation and for studies at, uh, as well, because actually um, uh, I met Dona Hope. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah okay. I met Dona Hope, uh, Imani Tafariama as well. Tafariama, yes. Um, I got to interview Energy, the dancer Energy. Yeah. In his place, and every day we would have go a dance hall party, like every night, every night. So, <laughs> me did they, the miguel of the thing, yeah. yeah, the core of Jamaican dance hall vibration. So, me really like it. And so was, me, it me, uh, was it was it what you expected <laughs> it to be? Yes, honestly, yeah, 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 yeah. Because um, before that, hung up on YouTube, we did I see them thing there. Yeah, we did a pretty video with them and said, wow, me have to go there one day. So, yeah, me glad see it happen, she will. <laughs> All right. So what are some of the benefits and mm -hmm. advantages that you have because you speak Jamaican Pato? <clears throat> um, well, when it comes to my studies, uh, I think I can make a difference. 
there are some other French Caribbean people that actually can speak Patois, I think. And also when it comes to to me as a researcher and as a, um, I would say, yeah, as a fan, French Caribbean fan of dancehall music, you know what I'm doing with my platforms, the way I break down the sun and everything. Uh, people actually, when they see me, I would them come up to me and say, yes, we, we love what you're doing because it's coming like a revelation for them because they actually, they would dance, because dancehall music is very big in Martinique, Jamaican dancehall music, yeah, very, very big. But the thing is that most people love the song then, but they can understand. So when we follow like the we can make a difference. the same experience that you had when you were listening yeah. when you were younger. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing is that we go deep in it still. And the studies help. And also passion is mostly passion. Passion because like every day, like me, I do my best to practice the language, to understanding and everything. So when me share all of them things there with them, they love it. And them can see, say, me know where me are talking about. And they actually trust me. Yeah, though, so that are the, one of the reasons why we are trying to be accurate, you see, and not talk nonsense, to be very accurate, reach out to my Jamaican friend them when we don't understand something and things like this and do my research. So that I want to benefit them, we would say, I can actually make a difference in my country, Martin, and even Guadeloupe as well. Yeah, we have become smarty still. <laughs> in the, yeah, in the industry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, in in the university, the course that mm -hmm. you you mentioned before, is it a popular course? Um, are there a lot of um students taking that course? Well, actually, what it was not mandatory. Yeah, it was like an option. So, I actually chose that option to attend the, that that class. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we get the best of it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm really um so fascinated by that, you know, because mm -hmm. you, you don't really know um the impact that Jamaican language has outside of Jamaica. A lot of people don't understand mm -hmm. the impact <laughs> that Jamaica has on other countries. Cause mm -hmm. you wouldn't you wouldn't just think that there are universities in French speaking countries teaching mm -hmm. Jamaican Pato. That's that's you know, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. So um <laughs> Jamaica, like I mentioned before, a small country with great mm -hmm. um cultural impact on the mm -hmm. world. So how is it evident in Martinique? So you mentioned earlier about the the huge dance hall culture there and the um course in college and I'm pretty sure course in the university, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's that's not the only university that offers that course. Maybe mm -hmm. there are others. I so, think so do you have like how in what other ways um, mm -hmm. is the Jamaican culture evident in Martinique? First, it's music, reggae, dancehall music. Um I think like Donga Martinique, it debuted maybe like the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And you have also Rastafari. So, and the sun system culture as well had a huge impact on the way the Jamaican dancehall music has been um, consumed and also exposed in, Jam in Martinican society. So the music, we had sun systems, dancehall parties, and as I said, we have Martinican dancehall artists as well. So dancehall has become like a part of our cultural or musical culture in Martinique. Dancehall and reggae as well. So you have die-hard fan of reggae dancehall music. Mm -hmm. Me included. So the music first. And then you have the language. We actually use some words coming from Patois. And sometimes we change the meaning of it. <laughs> like Gaza. We actually talk about we, we we use Gaza, but Gaza in Martinique means when the youths use it, they mean like uh, they they can say like Marcel in Gaza. This girl is a Gaza. That means that she belongs to the 
she comes from the streets. You see? <laughs> yeah, she's from the streets and she acting like someone coming from the streets and she wearing clothes that are very colorful and things like this and also her attitude. So we can use Gaza in that sense. We have Shata. Mm -hmm. In Jamaica, when they say Shata, it's Shuta, literally gangster, but we sometimes we use it to talk about the same kind of girl in in martinique <laughs> this girl is a shout out things like this um babylon for the police um and many other words uh, you know that slide in our urban language in martinique and so you have the music and the language as well what about like um separate and apart from the music mm -hmm. and the language do you have mm -hmm. any other evidence of the culture, for example, um, Rastafarian hairstyles or yeah. restaurants? Like maybe you have a Jamaican restaurant somewhere or do you have those? Yes, we have Jamaican restaurants. Like people from Martinique that actually cook Jamaican food may be like two or three restaurants. Um, as you said, also the, the dressing sometimes you know the red gold and green <laughs> that oh. we have one right there now and the locks as well and yeah also some aspect of the dressing mm -hmm. all right so um earlier you mentioned your book so let's talk about mm -hmm. the book um mm -hmm. what is it was it what is it called again in um Le... french in french yes mm -hmm. le den sol sous un nouveau jour you say slowly. I wanna, yes. I wanna repeat. So le, dance dancehall, sous, sous, mm -hmm. un, un, nouveau, nouveau, nouveau. Yes, jour, 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 jour. Okay. Le, yes, le dancehall, dance sous. Dance un, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sous. Le sous. Sous. Un. Un. Nouveau. Nouveau jour. Yeah. Sous. 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 Un. Un. Nouveau jour. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how would you say, uh, what was your motivation? Um, in writing mm -hmm. the book and what's the book about and where we can find it. Let's just talk all about the book right now. Okay. Uh, my motivation. So as I said, as I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, my former teacher, which is, um, who is Steve Gadet. So uh, he encouraged me to write this book because he actually saw that I, I had the potential to do it. That I have some skills when it comes to breaking down Jamaican dancehall music and also show the link between the music and the society. So I did it. I wrote the book and most of the topics that have been discussed in this book are sensitive, as I said, but all me write it, me never get up and say, well, uh, let me see uh, what not going good in a Jamaican write about it. No, we actually go through this on them first. For example, uh, let's say me listen to cartel song with Gaza Kim, teenage pregnancy. And you say, oh, okay, that's interesting. They are talking about teenage pregnancy. Then me book up on one later song where I talk about the same thing, teenage pregnancy. I say, oh, it must be something there. So I did some research on teenage pregnancy in Jamaican society and gather the song them we talk about it. So that's how I proceed for each chapter of the book. Yes. You started with the song, then you the did song. the social research, then you found yes. more songs talking about mm -hmm. the same issue, and then, okay, okay. Yeah, and that's how we get to realize that uh, more time dance and music it actually reflects what is going on in Jamaican society. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now you are a PhD student. Yes. So um, let's talk about that for a minute. What is your focus? What is the focus of your research? Uh, dancehall music. <laughs> oh, okay. Again, yes, dancehall music as um, dancehall culture. 
as a psychosocial institution in Jamaican society. Yeah, that's all. That is actually my topic. Mm -hmm. And I'm in my third year now. Yes. So um, soon you'll be uh, defending your <laughs> defending your, your your thesis and everything. Yeah, um, I think uh, next year, you know, due to the COVID thing, and so everything gets slowed down. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, you are on social media. You have a mm -hmm. large following on social media. Majority of the people who follow you are French speakers, correct? Yes, majority of them. Yeah. And no so seller. how can people find you on social media, on what platforms mm -hmm. and uh, um, what can they expect on these platforms that you have? Okay, so we actually have two platforms. So the first one is um, on Facebook, like Le Densol Susan Ubojo. And that's all me start. So we create that, that platform First, she promote the book. Yeah, then we get to share Jamaican content in it with French subtitles. And lately, maybe months ago, we start we, we come up with a brand new concept. Like me I do video and we break down Jamaican song in it. Yes. And it are gone good and actually build it. Uh, we get to touch like a large audience because of this. So that's the Densol Susan Uvo drop on Facebook. So it's Jamaican content and breaking down lyrics of Jamaican dancehall song in French. In French. And then we have IG, Midep on IG said where we have um, the name of the page is Inner Self, I N A S E L F. It's Inner Self. So basically, me I do the same thing and um, break down Jamaican song. Uh, the only thing is that the video of them shorter on IG, you see, uh, yeah, them them not past one minute, so them shorter and on IG you can see me also uh, sing Jamaican song when me in America when me on the road I drive and I sing <laughs> that's Jamaican how it, song. <laughs> that's how I thought. Yeah. yeah. No massa anemi, no massa anemi, no massa anemi. We the girl them say, cartel a dose, love a dose, love you, the girl. Cette chanson s'intitule Pure Love Midi Girl de Vibes Cartel. Vibes Cartel explique qu'il ne frappe pas les femmes, il ne leur donne que de l'amour. Yo box ça. No massa anemi, yo tompa. No massa anemi, yo kick. No massa anemi. Tu l'as giflé Non, monsieur, ce n'était pas moi. Donc, tu lui as donné un coup de poing No massa anemi. You kick. Ah, no massa anemi. Tu lui as donné un coup de poing Non, monsieur. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, actually, that's passion. Yeah, it in my blood, me think. Me love, me love it. So, that's me, that's inner self, that's a part of my brand. Mm -hmm. At the end of the, at the end of this interview, I want you mm -hmm. to send me the links. Uh, when I upload the video, I'll link yeah. them below the video. So, okay, yeah. perfect. All right. So, how would you rate your Jamaican patois level? What level you would say you'd be at? Beginner, intermediate, advanced? But how you mm -hmm. rate yourself? Well, um, due to the fact that I've never really lived in Jamaica, I would say that I would say advanced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good and I'm still learning, still have a long way to go. Uh, yeah, that's why I uh, me go to um, some YouTube channels, like a feel your own. Yeah, <laughs> like it, we learned a lot. And also the Jamaican movie them. Wow. We book up on one channel when I'm Richard Brown films. Wow. Excellent. They might have war part why them talk fast. You see, so that kind of thing actually helped me to become better in patwa so i would say advanced yeah have you ever have you ever come across any books that have helped you with learning patwa um some dictionary um i think you know it because you actually talk about it in one uh, of your videos the big one <laughs> yeah um actually me me book upon it at the university and the library and also this one so we carry it with me now. <laughs> the original dancehall dictionary. Okay. Yeah, it helps a lot. 
Yeah, they, it have um some dancehall, Jamaican dancehall expression in it. Yeah, so it it helps a lot. Yeah, um, sometimes me I go on Google too. Me just Google the all them and me I book up on some website like um jamaicanpatwa.com something like this it helps and then me have to figure it out if it makes sense when it comes to the translation and thing because as you know jamaican patwa is very versatile as a language <laughs> yeah i know prom push thing yeah. text have a lot to do with oh um. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah all right so since your jamaican patwa level is advanced i'm gonna mm-hmm. give you a quiz a Jamaican quiz, <laughs> question mm-hmm. and situation. Okay. So, um, about five questions and you just tell me, in these Jamaican situations, how would you respond, all right? Mm. So, number one, you're in Jamaica and someone yeah. asks you to go out, whether, you know, just hang out, go get something to drink or anywhere, mm-hmm. but you don't want to go. Mm-hmm. So how do you respond? How do you refuse their invitation? Uh, you say in a Jamaican puzzle. Mm-hmm. Like somebody tell me, say, we go out and have a drink or something. But me know where I go. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, who would I say? Mm, well, me would have to stay in my yard still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like them. this. Yeah, tell him yeah. to stay in your yard. Yeah, me rather stay in my yard. So you're going to tell your friends that me rather stay in my yard. But you say, I don't want to go. Suppose I, I don't want to go, right? You, you don't yeah. want to go, you know. But like, you don't want to <laughs> tell him, say, you don't want to hurt him. Um, yeah, that, yeah, true. Um, but like, don't, like, uh-huh. so Maybe we would have said, me appreciate it, but me not feel if you go out right now. Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> mm-hmm. Alright, that's what I work. If you're like, one next time. One next, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's better. Good. Yeah. Okay, okay. Me I take notes still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Alright. Um, someone phones you, someone gives you a call, um, mm-hmm. but you're too busy to talk. Mm-hmm. So what you just say? Like so you 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 you're busy at something, probably some research or something, and somebody yeah, yeah. call your phone and you can't uh-huh. can't talk right now. What you just tell them? Uh sorry, me do I do um me do I do something right, you know. Me I link you back later. Yeah, that's good. I link you back <laughs> later. That line, yeah. yes, mm-hmm. that's pretty good. I link oh, you okay. Back. All right. Um you go somewhere and like mm-hmm. it's, you know a restaurant or something and mm-hmm. they want to take your order but you're not mm-hmm. ready yet so mm-hmm. <laughs> what you just say you know you're not decide what upon it what you want off of the menu yet yeah and them come to take your order what you just tell them say um uh beg you one minute please miss still happy where you have all right, that's that's good. That you're really <laughs> advanced fun. That's that's good. Thank you. All right, um, your friend offers you something, mm-hmm. and you don't want it. So, for mm-hmm. example, them offer you like, I don't know, some way, some food or something that look appetizing. You know, you don't really want it, but you don't want me yeah. mean or a rude. So, how could you refuse? Hmm. Uh... Um, <laughs> uh-huh. like the person actually offered me some kind of food that I don't really like, right? Right, something like That's that. It. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, I refuse it, but you know what? You know, you know what? Mm. Like too harsh. Yeah. Um. <laughs> let me think. Well. Um. Um. Me good man. But uh, what would I say? Me good man, but give thanks still. <laughs> me no want it. Yeah, on, me yeah. good, me good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's exactly what you're saying. <laughs> All right. You have a headache. How do you mm-hmm. express that in Jamaican patron? You have a headache. Okay. Uh, 
Me and I hurt me. Yes. Wow. <laughs> You're right about <laughs> advance. Trust me. All right. Last one. How would you comfort your friend who is going mm-hmm. through a hard time or who is experiencing some physical pain? Mm-hmm. Um, would just, uh, um, Ush, man. You're good, man. Yes. Everything will be all right. Yes. <laughs> 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 Yo, you're really, you're really, you're really good, funny, funny photo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, can't take that from you. All right, so that's the end of uh, this interview. This okay. was fun. Thank oh, yeah, you it so was. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining me. And, uh, you know, it's always interesting to get the feedback or... Mm-hmm from non-Jamaicans, the non-Jamaicans perspective on Jamaican Patwa. So, um, like I said, I'll, I'll link all your information in the description yeah. bar below. So okay. if people okay. want to find you, they can find you on Facebook and Instagram. And also Perfect. where to purchase um, your book. Yes. Because um, um, I think I have followers who are non-English speakers, but I, I'm not sure mm-hmm. about French, but you know, mm-hmm. um, Hopefully, we'll grow and people will find you. Um, find yes. me and find you and all of those things. So, mm-hmm. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great experience. It was actually my first inter- interview, like online with a Jamaican person. Okay. Yeah, Bye. that are uh, actually working on Jamaican pathway. It was the first time. Okay. So, uh, yes, what a great experience. I love it. Thank you so much, and I hope you Thank enjoy you. the rest oh, I love of it. your day. <laughs> love it, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, um, you too. Okay, have a great day. Bye. Yes, bye bye. Are the bell that class done you know? Take care of yourself. See. Please like, share, and subscribe. And please hit that notification bell so that you may be notified every time when I upload a video. Also, please follow me on Instagram for daily Jamaican Patwa vocabulary. Are the bell that? Class don't you know? Take care of yourself. See you.